Because the studies are not mandatory in the United States and because there's a large body of, of entrepreneurs as well as scientists who feel they're not warranted, there is no government funding agency that funds such studies. It's extremely rare. So the major funding for studies of this nature in the United States is the companies. The government has no interest in funding these studies because a, the National Academies have said no, it doesn't make a difference whether you do it naturally uh, by uh, uh, natural breeding or by uh, molecular breeding. Um, you could get some hazards from natural breeding. It's true. We have bred certain potatoes that have higher levels of a certain toxin. And the breeders fortunately figured that out and they don't, they don't commercialize those, those potatoes. So they say, oh, you could get toxic effects from natural breeding, you could get toxic effects from molecular breeding, and we don't regulate natural breeding, so we won't regulate um, molecular breeding. So we're not getting any funding for that kind of research in the United States. Mostly it comes from companies unless somebody has private uh, f sums of money or a foundation is willing to support it. In Europe, uh, the European Union does fund such studies. So you see a lot of studies done in countries like Greece, uh, in uh, Turkey, and various countries doing uh, health studies animal feeding studies because they get funding from the European Union. If you knew exactly what you were looking for, maybe it wouldn't be as difficult. Um, when you study chemical, it's also hard. So we usually use animals to study chemicals, the toxicity of chemicals. Um, and um, uh, there's a lot of endpoints. That is, you could be looking at whether the chemical is a carcinogen. So you look for tumors. You could be looking for whether the chemical is what's called genotoxic, whether the chemical uh, affects the genetics of the animal whether it mutates the genes. It's called genotoxicity. You could be looking at whether the chemical affects the, um, the brain. That's called neurotoxicity. You could be looking at whether the chemical affects the hormone system. So um, that's called an endocrine disruptor. So even with, <clears throat> with an, a chemical, you, you know what to look for and you can get your experimental animal in your control and you can see whether or not you see any of these effects on the experimental animal that you don't see on the control. With the GM food, you don't quite know what you're looking for. There's a lot of things that could happen. You could be looking at nutritional levels. You could be looking at whether there's a change in the toxicity. You could be looking whether a new protein something that you even didn't imagine emerges with new properties that you couldn't have even imagined. So you don't quite know exactly what you're looking for. So some of the people who do these experiments, they kind of looking at the total picture, seeing if they see anything that seems reasonable. So the one study looked at um, genetically modified corn and they looked at the um, uh, the gut of the animal that they studied um, and, um, and they found abnormalities in the uh, um, digestive tract of the animal that they studied. They were looking for something and, um, and they could see uh, in parts of the digestive tract um, that there were abnormalities in the, in the 
in the tissue compared to the controls. So they were able to do that, and they did conclude that the GMO produced those abnormalities and the non-GMO did not. Now, did anybody care about that study? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, that study didn't appear in the front pages of the newspapers, and all of a sudden the government agencies, no, it was just one little study. So um, it's not easy you, to do these studies, it, um, and if you do them and you get a result, you're not necessarily going to get a supportive community behind you saying, hey, this is, you know, we ought to follow this up, you know, or what implication does this have on humans who eat this stuff? So um, th that's the problem, I think. Uh, no single study is going to reveal uh, something that people will look at and say, oh boy, this is a critical study. We better stop producing this, this product. First of all, it, it's extremely difficult to prove something is safe. You know, um, if you want to prove a product is safe, um, how do you prove something is safe? Well, it's very hard to prove it because if you do one test and it's safe, it might not be safe in another test that you do. But in order to get confidence that something is safe, let's say an airplane or a car, you test it under extreme conditions. You try to imagine what's the worst case scenario. If it survives the worst case scenario, then we'll have confidence in it. If you test it under the best conditions, you've not really given people confidence that it's safe. So you have to test the plane, for example, in conditions where the, you know, there's turbulence, or there's rain, or there's lightning, whatever. And, you know, can it go through a lightning storm? That's what you want to know, you know, or <clears throat> how will it deal with when there's extreme turbulence? Will it break up, or will, you know, will it hold together with all of its pieces hold together? if it's shaking. So you test it under the most difficult conditions. <clears throat> That's the, the only reasonable way to get confidence that something is, uh, is safe. Um, and um, I don't think we're seeing that approach to GMOs. Um, you know, uh, to do that, you have to have an imagination of what could go wrong when you introduce these uh, foreign gene complexes into the system, you know, what other genetic components in it could be uh, activated that would change the product. And if you can imagine such, such a system, then you'd have to uh, try to test it under those circumstances. So it, it takes a certain amount of creativity and imagination to uh, test something and get confidence in its, uh, in its safety, and not just do a simple test that the company might say, oh, well, we just fed it to these animals, and in, in uh, 90 days, we don't see any problems, therefore they're safe. That's not going to give confidence to uh, many people.